Hello, this is just a quick video tutorial on how to get started with Bex IQ Blocks. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, what you want to do first of all is go ahead and plug in your brain. Uh, I don't have one right here, uh, so it's going to say no brain connected, but yours should say uh, the brain is connected and it should say it's up to date. Uh, all of these things are going to be pretty much exactly the same whether you're using a Chromebook, a Mac, or a PC. Um, just as long as you're using Vex IQ or Vex Code IQ blocks. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to tell the program exactly what kind of robot you're working with. You'll see over here you have uh, looks, sound, uh, events, control, sensing, operators, variables, and then you can even make your own little comments. Um, so the way you do it is you just drag the command that you want over and underneath and it will snap. Um, so this this event right here, when started, that just means when you start the program. So it's going to say something like you could you could print on the brain you could or excuse me that's not print. This is just a comment um, to yourself. So when you're programming, you can kind of know what you're doing. Like you could have the first leg of the maze, you could make a comment. That way if you go back and you need to edit something, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so right now you might notice there's nothing in here that says like drive forward or turn or anything like that. Because right now it doesn't know that you have a robot that has a drive forward or anything like that. So, let's see, you see the little plug right here? It's like looking at the inside of the uh, side of the brain that has those input ports. So click on that and then you're going to click add device. Now most of the things that you're going to be doing is with a controller and a drivetrain. Um, so click drivetrain first. We don't want to click controller first because we're going to tell the controller how to drive and if there's no drivetrain then we won't be able to do that. So click drivetrain and then you're going to select where what port you have the left motor plugged into. It doesn't matter which motor you have uh, or which port you have it plugged into. Uh, just make sure that it is the correct port. So uh, if you select one, make sure that your left motor is actually plugged into one. So I'll click on one and then let's say my right motor is on six. Okay, and then the gyro, that's optional. If you uncheck it, then it's, it's not required and it'll let, it'll let you click done. But <clears throat> If you create the Autobot, I think it's called the Autobot from um, the kit instructions, then it'll probably have you install the gyro. So I'm going to go ahead and just click five to say that that's where my gyro is. All right. If you want to come back and edit these settings, you can. So if you've uploaded your program and if you notice your robot is going backwards, you can come in here and then you can click the arrow. And what that will do is it'll reverse the, uh, the front forward and reverse so that you can uh, then get your robot going in the right direction. Okay, the wheel size is also important. VEX kits come with 200 millimeter wheels, uh, but you can find the 250 millimeter wheels. Those are bigger. Uh, and so that would be important because think about the circumference of the wheel. If the circumference of the wheel is longer, then you have one rotation of a 200 millimeter wheel would not go as far as one rotation of a 250 millimeter wheel. Okay. Then your gear ratio, you might have geared your robot to go faster or to go slower. Um, so this is a little bit more advanced. Most of the time, the robot builds that you're going to do are just a one-to-one. Uh, -one. That means every time the motor turns once, the wheels are just turning once also. Okay, so I'm going to click Done. <clears throat> At this point, you could actually just program your robot to drive around based on this. Okay, but a lot of you also have put in... Uh, you want to control it with the controllers, so that's fine. So I'll select controller. And then you have to assign what the controller is going to actually do. So right now you're just telling the program there's a controller, but you're not telling it what it's actually going to be doing. So I think the easiest thing to do is just click this little circle, which represents one of the joysticks. I'll click on it, and then that's one way to control the robot, illustrated here. I'll click it again. That's another way to control the robot. I'll click it again. That's again another way to control the robot. I'll click it again, and this is probably the most traditional way to control the robot, where the right joystick makes the right motor go forward and backward, or the left 
goes left and goes uh, forward and backward. So I'll go ahead and click done. Now my controller is set up. I'm gonna click add device to show you just one more. The rest of them are pretty much the same. You just tell it what port it's in. Uh, now if you try to select gyro, if the gyro is already assigned in the drivetrain, then you don't need this one. It, but if you have another gyro, if you have a separate gyro, maybe for an arm or something like that, then you would set up another gyro. But right now the gyro that's on this one is already a part of the drivetrain, so we don't need this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the distance sensor. So I'll put in the distance sensor. Let's say I have it on port 2. And then you'll notice that you can name it. Okay, so it says like distance 2, um, but it, it really can be anything you want to call it. But I would just keep it what it comes up with so you don't get confused. Click done. There we go. Now I have all of these. If you've noticed, once I've added those, there are more options that have shown up over here on the left. Um, and actually, you know, let me add one more. Let me add the touch LED, touch LED, because over there on the left, once I click done, you'll notice that I should get more, I get more uh, options. So here, let's see, touch LED sensing, uh, it should be under, <clears throat> it's maybe under looks, set cursor, yeah, set touch LED right here. I don't think those were there. So it follows that if I remove that, those go away, All right? So you're only gonna have options for the robot based on the devices that are installed on the robot. So you have to tell it, hey, I have these things on the robot, okay? So once that's set up, then you can go ahead and, and start doing stuff. I like to put like a little print, print hello and then just download it right now because that's going to tell you if everything is configured correctly. It's going to tell you if your brain is working properly, if it's connected to the computer, and then when you click download and then you click run, you should see on the face of the brain it should say hello. All right. If it doesn't say that, then, then maybe you got to do some troubleshooting, but this will save you from working a long, long time on a program when it turns out uh, maybe things aren't set up properly and it's just going to be very frustrating. So I'm going to say uh, program has started. So it's going to print that on the screen when my program starts. Uh, then let's see, I'm going to go to uh, the drivetrain and I'm going to say, I could just say drive forward, which means it'll just do it and tell you, tell it to stop or stop driving forward. Or you can say drive forward for inches or millimeters. Uh, you can have it turn based on a, a, a degrees. All right, if you say turn right for 90 degrees, uh, it's going to uh, basically just use the motors, uh, knowing how much the motors have turned uh, to turn 90 degrees. Or if you use turn to heading 90 degrees, it's going to use that gyro. It's a sensor that can tell. It's kind of like a compass. It can tell if the robot has actually turned that much. So for instance, if the wheels slip on the floor or you're holding it and keeping it from turning, it'll keep on trying to turn until it gets to that heading, okay? So <clears throat> I'm gonna say drive forward and drive forward for one inch. How about let's change that to 24 inches. So that's going to be two feet. I'm going to drive forward for two feet and then I'm going to turn to heading 90 degrees. Okay. And don't wait. So I think I'm going to say, I'm going to say, wait, just leave it there. Don't wait. You can, you can test that and see how it works. Uh, and then I'm going to actually just, I'm going to select this control C control V. It copied that. Okay, so then there you go. So if I drive forward and then turn right and then drive forward and then turn right and then I'll do control V again and then drag that down and drive forward and turn right. What am I doing there? I'm going in a box. Okay, but if you notice here, you've got one, you got basically one, two, three. Oh, I haven't quite gone in a box yet, have I? I would need to go one more. So let me see here. I'm going to copy that and then 
There we go. Now I'm driving in a box, right? Because it's got four sides. I'm going forward, turning, forward, turning, forward, turning, forward, turning. Got it. But why repeat thing, something four times? It seems like it's a, a lot of code, a lot of blocks over here where I can actually just use the repeat command. So I'm going to take this out. All right. And then just delete it. Or you can just drag it off to the side and it'll get the whole thing. All right, so now I want to go down to control and I'm going to say repeat. Now I'm going to drag repeat right there and look at it. When you drag it in the right spot, it automatically puts it around the, the stuff that you want. And so that's all one piece of the program now. So that's going to repeat 10 times. I only want it to repeat four times because I want it to just go in a box. Okay. So, oh, and every time it's going to say program is started. So actually I don't need that. Let's pull these apart, drag that there, and then here. There we go. So it's going to repeat this four times. It's going to go drive forward for 24 inches, turn heading to 90 degrees, and then repeat. Drive forward 24 inches, turn 90 degrees, and then repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Okay? It's going to do all that. So then I'm going to have, let's say, I'm going to say have it print at the bottom right here program has completed there you go okay so then at the end it should print program has completed so give that a try that's going to help you figure out how to um, pretty much do some very very basic stuff i do want to say one thing that it could be important when you set drive time out you maybe put that at the very top Drive timeout does, remember I told you that if it's turning to heading 90 degrees, what if it got stuck on next to a wall or if it uh, ran into another robot or something? It's going to keep on turning and turning and turning and try to get there. Uh, it, could, it could hurt the motors. It could you know, cause other issues. And so it's, a, it's not a bad idea to set the drive timeout to say like two seconds. So at the, the worst, it's going to just try and try and try for two seconds. And if it still can't get to where it needs to get to, it'll, it'll give up. Okay, that, so that's what that means. Um, drive velocity. If you want to slow your robot down or speed it up, okay, you can go to 100%. I would just use the percentage. So I want to make sure it's going the fastest. So I'm going to do 100%. But then if I want it to go slower, Later, I could, I could drop it down to 75% or to 62%. It really doesn't matter. I can choose whatever I want. All right. And then uh, set drive stopping to brake. This is also very interesting. Brake and coast and hold. Um, brake will make the motor not move. So like it will use power. It will use electricity to make it so that that motor, you won't be able to turn it on its own. Like you can't turn it with your hand. Um, coast will let that happen. So after the motor's done driving, you could like push your motor, uh, your robot, and it would go, and those motors would turn. Um, that would be what coast is. And you know, these all have different applications. Now, I'm not 100% sure you're gonna have to test hold. What I think hold is, is that if the robot moves a little bit or it's pushed or something, that it'll move back to the position that it was at. You'll have to test that. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But brake is the most common setting. Uh, and I think it is by that, uh, like that by default. So you don't actually have to put it in there. But I like to put it in there in, in case I want to change it later and just kind of play with it and figure out how that might affect the program. Um, and so I'll, I'll put that in there. Uh, set drive heading. So drive heading, it's basically going to be the same thing as turn to 90 degrees, except for your, uh, your setting basically where it's going to drive forward to a, a specific degrees. And this will keep it on track. So if it goes, um, if it goes uh, to, and I, I don't want to use this down here in the repeat, because every four times the drive heading, every time it repeats, the drive heading has changed because it's turned 90 degrees. So the drive heading won't be zero degrees, for instance. But if you wanted to then have it drive forward, like down here after the repeat, 
um, you can have it, you can say drive forward. I believe this is how you have to do it. Uh, you say drive forward and then set heading, heading to zero degrees. So it should drive forward in that heading. Uh, and then what I could do is I could say I want it to drive forward for and make it wait for say two seconds and then stop driving. Okay, so that's another way to get it to drive forward. Uh, so then stop driving, okay? So I would say uh, go ahead and give that a try, download it, run it, see how it works, see if you got it, and, uh, and then go ahead and uh, work on the project that you have to do. It's probably uh, the maze that you wanna get through. All right.